Hello all, my name is Kevin French and I'm going to be providing you with some tips on how to be an effective dog walker to work for Zoom and Groom. Let's get started. Listed here are some key steps on becoming an effective dog walker. They consist of maintaining control of the dog, walking at a steady pace, curbing your dog, and routing your walk. Let's start with maintaining control of the dog you are walking. It is important to remember that every dog behaves differently in its environment. Therefore, the walker needs to always be prepared for the unexpected. Dogs should be within no more than five to six feet from the walker on their leash. The further the dog gets away from the leash, the harder it is to control them. Never yank or jerk the leash unless it is an emergency. When you yank or jerk the leash, it can cause damage to the dog's neck. Make sure the dog sits before crossing the street. Therefore, it keeps you and the dog safe. For larger dogs, double wrap the leash or use two hands to ensure that you have control of the dog. When walking, always be alert and ready for the dog to pull at any point in time, as dogs will suddenly chase any other animals such as rabbits, birds, and squirrels. Other tips for controlling your dog include wearing closed-toed shoes to prevent yourself from tripping, bringing treats with you to reward good behavior, such as stopping by the streets before you cross, and if possible, use a dog harness instead of a choker, as a choker pulls at the dog's neck instead of its chest. And avoid taking un unnecessary items along the walk to prevent yourself from becoming distracted or having your hands full. Walking at a steady pace is extremely important. And this means that you should never attempt to run with the dog because it makes it much harder to control the dog. You need to walk at a comfortable pace for yourself because you are the person walking the dog and not the other way around. If the dog is trying to pull you, keep a constant pressure on the leash to send the message to the dog that you would like to slow down and allow the dogs to smell around for a little bit, but are sure to keep moving forward. As you remember, you need to keep the walk to 30 minutes only. This brings us to curbing the dog. Curbing your dog must be done by all dog walkers. When curbing the dog, step on the leash so the dog will stay in your control during the process. Understand the signs that your dog might be looking to use the bathroom. Signs may be smelling around, walking in circles, or eyeing grass and trees. Insert your hand inside the provided bag. Pick up the droppings and then turn the bag inside out. Tie the bag into a knot and dispose the bag in the nearest possible garbage can. As I said in the previous slide, all dog walkers are responsible for picking up the droppings from each dog you are walking. If you do not have a sufficient amount of bags, you will be responsible for retrieving some of the dog owner's house or apartment and going back to the spot and picking up the droppings. This is a law that we as citizens must follow. If you do not have enough bags, it's not a bad idea to also bring plastic grocery bags, although you might need to bring some extras because they're very thin and they tend to have holes in them. The last component of being a good dog walker is routing the walk. Routing the walk can have an impact on the dog's behavior because it basically means that you're putting the dog in the proper surroundings. Take the dog on a route that is somewhat familiar to them, meaning that they can smell around in spots that they've smelled before and they know where they're at. Stay on a straight path within the sidewalk. Do not veer off into the grass and into the street, as this could put the dog in potential danger. If possible, try to stay in areas that have trees, bushes, and grass, because dogs like to smell the outdoors, and that's where other dogs have gone in the past. When routing your walk, it's important to keep your eyes out for certain things that you should avoid. Avoid crossing paths with unfamiliar dogs. If a dog comes across a dog that they've never seen or smelled before, it could cause them to become anxious or angry. Avoid areas that are overcrowded, such as schools and churches. If a dog is in an environment where he's uncomfortable and around lots of people, he could potentially become anxious. Attempt to stay away from busy streets as dogs may not like to be in loud areas. Stay in areas that are relatively quiet and open to give the dog a sense of freedom.